Back to you now at 910 and the year is winding down for Oklahoma City Public Schools and it's you know been a tough one to say the least for the district that slashed 30 million dollars from its budget to counter the state's budget deficit that we're facing right now. So what does the future hold for OKCPS? We are joined now by Superintendent Aurora Laura. As always, thank you for for joining us, especially during this busy time. Yeah, thanks for having for me. And I want to get to there's a lot of positive things on the horizon mm -hmm. that I know your district is looking forward to. But first, you just finished your first year, you know, at the helm of of this district and it was a really tough year for you too. You had a lot on your plate. You know, it was a tough year, but it was a great year. Uh, I love being part of Oklahoma City. We figured out a way through $30 million worth of budget cuts and um, I believe bright times are ahead for us. Maybe not in the immediate future, but I've had a great year and I still plan to be here for a long time. Yeah, well, congratulations on the Thank first you. year. But, you know, back to those cuts, you slashed 30 million. I mean, a visible slash in manpower, in resources. What is, you know, now that we're the last few days, I think the last day of school is the 30th yep. for y'all. Now that we're ending the last few days here, what is the state of the classroom now that it's the end of the year after these cuts? Yeah, well, it was a challenging year because of the cuts. And so we had to raise class sizes, um, had fewer instructional materials for teachers and unfortunately the best information we have for for at this time for next year is that we're going to be raising class sizes again so it's a really challenging time to be a teacher in Oklahoma and you took me exactly where I wanted to go because you know the legislature trying to strike some sort of a deal here which has not happened yet you're anticipating even more cuts, you know, worse news to come. What are you expecting? Yeah, so the budget proposal that I announced earlier this spring was to plan for about 10 million in cuts. And we obviously are hoping it doesn't come, back, come out that bad, but we are going ahead and preparing to raise class sizes again, cut contracts. We're selling the central office building. Um, dipping into our fund balance. So we're prepared to move forward because we have no other choice at this point. And I did have, um, it sounds to be a parent maybe, uh, her name is Julie, she wrote in and she asked this, if our schools face even more cuts, which you're saying that you know, it's likely that we will, that you will, what is on the chopping block? Uh, you know, more teachers, resources for students. What does this mean for our kids? You know, specifically, Julie wants to know. Yeah, well, at this point, what it means is students in grades fourth, fifth, and sixth are going to get larger class sizes again. Um, you know, we're still having a problem with instructional materials, getting teachers the supplies that they need in their classrooms. Um, we're trying to absorb as many cuts as we can downtown, but when we're dealing with the magnitude of cuts that we've already had to take, and then adding more cuts on top of it, there's no way to impact, to keep it completely away from students at this point. And it's hard to even wrap your head around, almost unimaginable, what it's like to be a superintendent in Oklahoma right now, or even you know, on, in, in any sort of staff capacity. As this legislature is trying to come up with numbers and a budget, do you even sleep at night right now? I mean, this is you're not a lawmaker, so this is out of your hands, technically. Yeah, right? I mean, I think the challenging thing is we are, we are being asked to do more and more work with fewer and fewer resources. And so I think when these cuts come down, people, the workload hasn't decreased. And so people um, are expecting us to be able to respond quickly, get them everything they need. And, and it becomes really challenging when you have laid off so many staff people. So we are up pretty late nights and we've got another long year ahead of us, it looks like. How do you think you handled everything? You know, your first year in this role, you, you look back, you had to cut teachers, classes, consolidate classrooms. How do you think you handled everything? Well, you know, I think we, I got us through um, some really difficult times. We've made it through the end of the year. Um, I think we've got a solid plan for next year, it's, but it's gonna be challenging. And I think in the grand scheme of things, we've made some progress in, in academically to try and put kids first, even with fewer resources. So I, I think it's been a good year, although it's been very exhausting. And you must, you know, be paying so close attention to what's happening at the state level and you know how this is going to trickle down and affect your district. What do you think the solution is? You know, do you have a, a specific opinion as to where this money should come from? Who should be cut? You know, what, what's your solution for education? Well, long term, there needs to be solid, stable revenue and there needs to be a lot more new revenue that's being put into the mix, not just for education, but for other state agencies as well. Um, I've worked in a variety of states where there's just been a lot more funding and a lot more um, support being placed in public education. And, and I think our state really needs to take a look at, at what their priorities are and make sure that we're, 
we're um, looking at this for the long term and, and investing in our future. And you know, you have come out and said if more cuts are to come, um, this is devastating to public education here in Oklahoma. What, do, what does the next 10 years look like for our state? Does this get better? Does it just continue to get worse for years on end? You know, realistically, what's education look like? Yeah, well, it partly depends on what kind of leadership we see from our state capital. Um, we hope that there is a long-term stable funding solution, but if there isn't, then it means we're probably gonna continue to go through um, you know, good times and then times when the budget tanks again. And, and so long-term, we've gotta figure out how to plan for that. Um, but the other thing is if we don't get a stable solution, we are gonna have to move into school closures and start consolidating buildings because long-term, there's just not a way to keep all these buildings open. And my last question to you, we're gonna break this up into two segments for our, for our viewers that wanna look forward to some silver linings coming up after, uh, after the break. What would be your one message to families, you know, parents, students, faculty listening at home right now? A piece of good news for people to hold on to, you know, and hang on to during this really tough time. Well, you know, the one thing that makes me so happy is that we have got really great staff people who are invested in our kids for the long term. And um, even though it's been challenging, they want to be here. They want to make a difference for kids. And I think that's gonna be the thing that gets us through hard times. Yeah, and we have some of the greatest teachers, you know, Absolutely. and administrations around. Absolutely. Uh, Aurora, hold tight for one more segment because coming up next, we continue our talks with Aurora Laura and also Mary Malone, the president and CEO of the Foundation for Oklahoma City Public Schools about the future of this district and some positive things that families, students and staff can all hold on to and look forward to as well.